Don't think of the exact words, just think of the gist and then just say it. Um, so you go, hello viewers, or hello potheads, or it's really hard to do. hi kids, yeah. or hi I'm Lucy. Um, hello viewers, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> hello viewers. <laughs> Hello viewers. And welcome to Food Tribe. Today, Mr. James May is in my kitchen and he's gonna be helping me make his steak recipe from his book. We're all missing the pub a bit lately, so we thought we'd venture into the pub grub section of O'Cook. Yes, yeah, when I say steak recipe, it's not really a recipe, is it? It's how to, how cook, to cook a steak, in. yes. Yeah, Here are your steaks. Thank you. Sirloins, Lovely. expensive. And in exchange, instead of having you sitting around doing nothing, I thought I'd give you my precious Precious. Peppercorn sauce recipe to oh. attempt. It's pretty good. It's different to what you might expect, mainly because it doesn't have blue cheese in it because I hate cheese. No cheese? Exactly. Oh yes, Lucy hates cheese. That's almost become a meme in itself in some playgrounds, I believe. Okay, green peppercorns, whiskey, sugar, teriyaki sauce. Oh, this is from Food Tribe. Plug. Double cream. That doesn't sound too difficult. Shall I begin doing this? You've put things out for me. Yes, you have. Lovely. I'll leave you to it then. Okay. And have a sit down. No, you can't sit down. I wasn't allowed to. I just stand here and watch and yeah, just, it then. Yeah, just stand there and make comments. Right. Green peppercorns, whiskey, white sugar, yes. Teriyaki sauce, yes. Double cream, 300 milliliters. That must be 500, is it? 600, half of that. Okay. Rinse peppercorns to remove brine. Hence this conveniently placed sieve. Those are peppercorns coming out of pot. Your tap's the normal way round, Lucy. Cold on the right. Cold on the right, correct. Sometimes you get a kitchen that's been plumbed by an East European and they sometimes do it the other way around. We lived in a rented house for a bit while our house was being built. The kitchen had been plumbed many years ago by a British plumber and the new bathroom had been put in by a Polish one, it being Hammersmith, obviously. And the taps were the other way around and I just never got it right. Is that, is that rinsed, would you I say? Think so. so I'm removing the brine by doing that. Put the whiskey butter, butter? I forgot to tell you that there's butter. There's no mention of butter in the ingredients. Yes, I forgot to add it, but I gave you the butter dish. But how much? A knob of butter. A knob? Yep. Thank you. Put the whiskey, butter, peppercorns and sugar. So knob of butter like that? Yep, that's about right. Okay, that's a knob of butter, as usual, about the size of a piece of cheese. Whiskey, four tubs. Does it matter if you use Tennessee whiskey or Scottish whiskey or Japanese whiskey? I don't think so. We usually just have that because it's what I drink. <laughs> I was asking about Scottish whiskey. I'm pulling on that because obviously Scottish whiskey would have a cork top. This is American, so it's a screw off. Four tubs. Presumably it's not that critical. No, not really. One. Normally at home, I just guess this, but as we're doing this on Food Tribe, I'll do it properly. That's roughly four of those. White sugar, one tusp. But there's a tusp of sugar, excellent, and heat for two minutes. It smells very um, well, it whiskey. smells like whiskey, yeah. You've also got to stir this quite carefully so you don't mangle the peppercorns as well, haven't you? Otherwise you'll turn in, into sort of mushy peppercorns, like something they would have in Yorkshire in a chip shop. Here we go, butter is melting. Okay, this is, I'm just heating this, I'm not boiling it. Just be a bit careful with it. Thank I always you. think it smells quite nice, the peppery whiskey, because you can smells. get some quite peppery, sort of smoky whiskeys. Now this smells, because it's, it's a Tennessee whiskey, it's quite sugary as well. I'm surprised you need sugar also, but I suppose that softens the taste of it, doesn't it? It might help bring out the salt in the teriyaki as well. Ah. See, I know some stuff about food. You do. You know a lot, really. You just pretend you don't. Okay, so that's all melted, and I think um, what's the word that the chefs use? Uh, not combined. Um, what is it they say? Nikki's always saying it on the cooking show. She says incorporated. That's it. Three tubs of teriyaki sauce. That's gonna. I can tell that's gonna taste good. I like teriyaki sauce anyway. Three tubs of that. Now I can pump up the volume and make that boil. And once that's boiling, I add the double cream and I can guess that, can't I? It's half that pot. Yeah, 300 ml, about half the pot. This is gonna be quite a rich sauce. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest, I'm always in two minds about putting sauce on things like steak. I don't eat very much red meat, certainly not pure red meat. 
chicken sauce, things in curry, but I tend to eat chicken or vegetables in curry. When you've got a piece of sort of pure meat like that, I sometimes think, why put a sauce on it? I agree. I used to never have peppercorn sauce or any sauce on my steak because I think it's got enough flavour in itself, especially if it's seasoned properly. But I tried this once and I've just always had it since, especially as like, we always have steak and chips and that with the chips is really good. It's actually making me go slightly faint, that. Right, that is definitely boiling. Now I've got to add the double cream. Are you a lid right off or half off person? Uh, right off. Lid right off, not spilling the cream as you pull the last bit off. Thus, do I need to give that a quick stir? No. Nah. Should be all right. Mm -mm -mm. Right, simmer for 15 minutes. That looks like a lot of sauce. It'll be too much sauce, I reckon. That looks like enough for four people. Yeah, probably four or five maybe even. But don't worry, it won't go to waste. No, I'm sure it won't. It's probably the sort of thing that matures quite nicely if left for a day or two, isn't it? Yeah, especially when the cream goes off. <laughs> yeah, and then it can become cheese. When was the last time you had like red meat? Probably when we made the steak on Oak Cook, which is getting on for a year ago, isn't it, Tom? Oh no, I did have a Kraft cheeseburger about three weeks ago when I was out in my van. I was overcome. I had a quarter pounder with cheese. I'd miss it. I do like it. I just try not to eat it because it seems too extravagant somehow. It's a, I'm, not, I'm not against it. I just try to ration it. And obviously I had a bacon sandwich earlier today. I suppose. Is that red meat or white meat? That's it? White meat. See, I think of that as white. Yeah, same. But it's not poultry, obviously, because it's a mammal. So I think pork is white. I'd say pork is white. <laughs> okay, I'm going to throttle back a bit there, so it should just... Bloop. Bloop, bloop. Yeah, that's what it's doing. It's blooping. The top oven is probably still warm, isn't it? Because it's got the chips in. Should we put a couple of plates in to heat up as well? I'm a big fan of hot plates. Yes. Or warm plates. Anyway. We always have hot plates. I put the plates in the in our little jewelit bunker cooker yeah. just to warm up. And a load of people in comments said, "Why are you cooking the plates?" Yeah. A lot of people don't put warm food, plates, but put, it makes sense. Put hot food on cold plates, and the only time that's really acceptable is if it's say you're having a steak with a salad. Then, mm. but it should still be warm. It shouldn't be sort of from the oh, pantry cold. I agree. It's like a travesty in this household if we forget to heat the plates up and we have to microwave them as a backup. Because that does also work to heat your plates up, but I know you're very anti-microwaves. Mm. I've resisted a microwave so far. Do you know, in my very own pub, just before it shut down, I went there and I had... Joe made a really interesting starter made with sort of roasted cabbage and something, sort of slightly Middle Eastern. And it was, it was lovely, but obviously everything in it was very thin and very light, so it would go cold very quickly. Mm. And his assistant, his sous chef or whatever, made it and served it on a cold plate. And I said to Yorkshire Chris, he said, is that nice? I said, it is nice, but you ought to put it on a hot plate because it cools down far too quickly. And he just immediately took it off me and then went, went at the back and kicked whoever the, I can't remember his name. That's terrible, isn't it? Kicked him to death, really. And I said, that wasn't really necessary. I'm just saying for next time, you know, I don't want to be one of those people who sends food back because I think that's a bit... Hello, kitty. What's his name? Socks. Yeah. Socks. He's not impressed. He just came to look, see if his food had been done and it hasn't. So they come give us food. Oh, this is more than blooping. That's... Oh. Took your half it. Indeed. An unwatched pot does boil. I still get the feeling that there's a lot of cream here and not very much peppercorn. Okay, so you've got about 10 minutes to go on that. Are you brave enough to start thinking about steaks? Uh, yeah, I guess I'll just season them first. <laughs> and oil them. Yeah. I'll get the cookbook so I can plug it. Yes, please. So while James gets on with the peppercorn sauce, I'm going to season the steak as per the instructions in the book that he has issued me. You've got to say excellent, excellent book. Really, really good book. You should buy it. It's available on Amazon and in all good bookstores. Rub both sides of the steak with olive oil and season with salt. Sea salt crystals if you have them. I think I might have them. This is thickening up slightly. It's very exciting. Lovely. So I've got my olive oil, my salt and my pepper. I'm assuming oil first. I do oil first, yes, because then the salt sticks to it. <laughs> but then you have oily hands when you go to get the salt. You've got two hands. Yes, 
I do. So use one hand, one. I just rub it around with the finger, then use the other. Make sure you've taken the lid off the salt first, otherwise you'll put oily hands on the. Very good. Okay, one hand only. Okay. Need a bit more oil. Maybe. No, I think you've got more than enough on there, to be honest. Okay. Don't need a bit more oil. Turn it over a few times. So you reckon oil the steak, not the pan? Yes, that's how the professionals do it. Years ago on a program we made, Man Lab, we had a but we had this fantastic Canadian chef came in. It was one of our, you know, ask the experts moments. And he, his job was simply to cook steaks in a restaurant up in London. And he was absolutely fantastic at it. And it was he who said, oil the meat, not the pan. And he also said, salt cooks, pepper burns. So you season with salt before cooking, add pepper after. Oh, so when it says add pepper now, I shouldn't add pepper now. Did I put that? Oh no, ah. I completely invented the pepper. You did. My apologies. I may have said something about putting pepper on at the end. Yeah, salt and pepper, but I thought it was implicit. You, you know, do the... Okay, thing. so that's, I've always put pepper on at this stage. Okay, I think that's enough. It's really coarse sea salt, this. That's okay. It'll sort of disintegrate a bit in the pan. Now, the other mistake I think people make, and this is the mistake I made for years when I used to eat more of this stuff and I kept trying to do it, is they don't make the pan hot enough because we are inherently scared of overheating the pan. But it's got to be almost smoking hot because then when the steak touches it, mm. it's properly fried and you get the brown lines on it and you get the Maillard effect and so on. If you don't have it hot, what you effectively do is boil the steak in oil and its own juice. And that's when they come out gray. So it's got to be almost frightening when you put it, you've got to get that proper as it goes so, in. If it just goes like that. How do I know? I don't know. <laughs> it sort of, it almost begins to smoke. So like the chapatis? A bit like doing the chapatis, yes, okay. exactly. How long until the sauce is? Five minutes. I shall come to your other side. Well, I'll move out of the way as long as you promise to give that the occasional twirl for me. Okay, I shall move it to the rear ring. Thus. Very good. <laughs> so number 10, really hot. I reckon. So you reckon it will smoke when I need to... Yeah, the pan we used on the TV, it actually started to smoke very slightly. It also changes its attitude in some way that's difficult to explain. You sort of know when it's really hot. Maybe it affects the air above it and distorts your I mean, vision. It's, it's smoking now. Yes, it is. I'd say you're probably good to go. That was very quick. Now you like this quite rare, don't yeah. you? So I reckon with those pieces, it's probably only two to two and a half minutes to size. When I have tried this in the past, I always used to do each side for about you know five or six seconds just to sear it. That's what I always do normally. But Nikki doesn't do that. Nikki says you cook it on one side, then cook it on the other side. But if you want to flip it and sear it, that's fine by me because I I would because I'd be nervous and I'd want to see what the other side looked like. Flip one of them and see if it. Oh, that no, looks quite too soon. Yeah, why has it done that? If anything, it was... oh yes, but it was that end, so you haven't got it centrally over the ring. Uh, rookie mistake. Are you timing it? I checked my watch when it went in, but I forgot you what forgot time what it time was. was. That's why you had the thing on there. The other thing that the Canadian told me was that if you poke the steak, compare it with the firmness of that bit of your thumb. So with your thumb on your first finger, soft, that's, that's rare, all the way up to well done there, which feels very firm. That being rare medium, that being medium rare. Can you feel the difference? Yeah. As I say in the book, when I do it, I cut a bit off the end and have a look because I just... Oh, this <laughs> feels like burnt. So this is a bit like London in the 1950s in Lucy's kitchen. I think they look pretty nice. They do look pretty nice. You're supposed to let it rest for a minute or so, but you can use that time to assemble your um, sweet potato wedges. Should we plate this up properly? Let's plate up. I'll tell you what we didn't do. Cook a few frozen peas in the meat juices, which is quite nice. In the meat juices? Yeah, you leave the, the steak juice in the pan, put a splash of red wine in, which you've been drinking, and then just run some frozen peas around it for about a minute and a half, and they taste really fantastic. Um, I really like the Nando's peas. Nando's peas? 
Yeah, they do it with mint and a bit of chili. Oh yeah. They're really nice. You've put all the chips on one portion. Yes, because this portion's got loads of horrible meat juice. So I thought we'd have one nice portion and then another test portion. Okay. That looks quite nice. I'm quite happy with that. It does look quite nice, yes. Lacks peas though. See, the, the colour isn't right without a bit of green on it. Yes, there you go. Beautiful. Much nicer. Okay, the peppercorn sauce is definitely ready. Should we try eating a bit of the meat to see how well you cooked it, and then we'll add some peppercorn sauce to see how much difference that makes? Yes. yes. I think that the peppercorn sauce is not going to go with the thyme rosemary new sweet potatoes. Well, let's use the peppercorn sauce with the second. Other one. Yes. So okay. Should we try this one first? Yes, off you go. I go first. Yes. Is it overcooked? Um, I was aiming for rare. I'd say you've got rare medium there, but it looks, it's pink. It's nice. Bit overcooked, I'd say. You haven't put any black pepper on it. You don't like black pepper. I forgot. You can still do it. It's allowed. <laughs> if you want to. I always found doing that so exhausting. It is. When you're in a hurry, and an electric one really helps. I think that's quite nice. Shall I try a little bit? Let's yes. Try that little bit there. Oh, it's pretty good. Mm. I'll try some with this because I've not had sweet potato with steak before. Mm. No? Well, you think it's overdone. Oh, you don't like the chips? I don't like the chips with it. They're too sweet. All right. Well, they're called sweet potatoes. And <laughs> let's try the peppercorn sauce on the other one. Other one coming in. So what I find strange is that you discard all that extra meat juice. I'd have used that to do some peas or even pour a bit of it on the steak because I think it will have a lot of flavor in it. <laughs> That's enough, isn't it? Or do you want a bit more? I'll put a bit more on the end without all the fat, like this middle bit here. <sighs> Do you eat peppercorns when you have peppercorn sauce? Do I eat the peppercorns? Yeah. Yeah? I don't. What, you pick them out? Yeah, so scrape them to the side of What, you side. just rely on them flavouring the, the sauce? Yeah. Do the rest of your family do that or is it just you? Probably a 50-50 split. We'll go for Thomas Arbitrator. Do you pick the peppercorns out of peppercorn sauce? No, it's not like picking the chicken out of chicken fricassee, isn't it? Yeah, or the cornflakes out of a bowl of cornflakes. <laughs> This must be torment for Mike, who hasn't eaten anything all day. And he's Would you like some, Mike? I'd love some. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. That'll be five ninety-nine. Have you tried the peppercorn sauce? Not yet. Well, you've got to pick the peppercorns out first, obviously. That'll take you half an hour. I wouldn't say it's spot on. There's something off about it, but it's still nice. What's off? I'm Too much to, cream? I'm trying to figure it out. Well, pretty good to though. Incorporate a bit further. It doesn't taste as nice as I'm used to. It tastes to me like it hasn't reduced enough. Yeah, and could exactly, have cooked yeah. more gently, but for longer. Yeah, it should have thickened out a bit. But you're right. It is. It is. It is delightfully cheese-free. And it's good, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It tastes sort of fresh, even though it's made with something quite rich and thick, like cream. So I reckon after that experience, I will probably cook steak in that method rather than my usual way of cooking steak but for less time because these are a bit overcooked will you make my peppercorn sauce if i make a steak for somebody i will offer them the option of your peppercorn sauce yes that's the issue with it you can only really have it with steak yeah i'm just trying to think would that work on chicken mm, no it wouldn't not really would it work on spam no well i'm not sure spam in peppercorn sauce sounds quite good to me mm. yes from mike yes from tom Roast that. Yeah. Roast block no. of spam. Yeah, haggis and peppercorn sauce. Now there's mm. something. Pour that all over its sonsy face. It'd be tremendous. Mm. What is the conclusion to this, Lucy? That I will cook my steak your way moving forward and that you like something that I have created. Wow, what an inclusive and mindful result. I would say, actually, having experienced that, I think with that cast iron skillet, that gets really hot. So I think all the cooking times that I suggest can probably be reduced by 25% or so. Mm. If, you, if you're just using a regular normal bottom frying pan, 
stick to the times I give you. That does make a difference. But it's not ruined by any means. Most well, for, people a, would... for a first attempt, yeah. I'm happy with that because normally when you cook a steak in new way, you bugger it up. Yeah. Mm. That's not going to go to waste. Oh. Cut. Like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe, and cut. Mm -hmm.